I kind of want to give an example of what it's like to sit in a room in silence and say, hey, I want to create something. How do you create a vibe? How do you start? How do you work with artists and, and really sculpt a song into something? I'm going to take you through me working on my MPC, maybe exporting that and showing you what I do in Ableton and some of the tricks in Ableton that I don't think people normally use or know about. And then finally taking that product and sharing it with my production partner in Pro Tools and then finishing the record in Pro Tools. So hopefully by the end of this today, you'll get some better ideas of what you can do to help your music. Today, what I wanted to do was walk you through a song that I made with my production partner. His name is Vali. We call him Vali Contra. Around 2014, we sort of connected through the internet. Uh, we've been making music together ever since, and we consider ourselves a production team. And it's really interesting because Vali is an artist as well as a producer. So when we're making uh, production for our own group, it's a really fun experience. It's me mixing in who I am and what my experience is and sort of trying to tailor beats that go along with who he is. He has a line in one of his early songs where he says, um, I'm halfway between Pink Floyd and Biggie. Sort of gives you an idea of where we try to go. It's very much hip hop, but it's also reggae influenced. There's also rock influenced. There's also, you know, some singing, some chatting. Volley kind of does it all. When we're sitting down and, and starting to come up with ideas, I normally start with going through records. That's sort of my, my source of where I get inspiration from on a daily basis. I'm a digger. I dig for old records. I get inspired by them. I'm one of those people who tries to figure out how people got sounds in whatever era. You know, all of that makes us better as musicians, as engineers, uh, as producers. That thing of studying history is something that's big with me. Even if the sample itself doesn't make it to the final product, it's what sort of creates and kicks off and sparks my idea. And for this, you know, I wanted to show people what it's like when you're sort of just sitting in this room in silence and saying, okay, well, where do I start? How do I begin? What vibe am I going for? This is the conversations that you sort of have to have with artists prior to creating something for them. I know we're in an era where a lot of people just sit at home and make things all day and then try to figure out who they're going to give it to. But I have the pleasure of actually creating music for a specific person, understanding where he is in his life, understanding the music that he's put out before, understanding where he wants to go, where he thinks he wants to go and where I think he should go, you know, and merging those two. It's always conversation. It's always us hanging out. It's always us talking about current issues and figuring out you know, how someone thinks or what their vantage point are, you know, what their vantage point is. That helps a lot when you're making music so that you can know what tones to give that person, what sort of ideas you can suggest to them, uh, what things they won't do, places they don't want to go are just as important as where you think they should go. So that's sort of the idea when I'm sitting back and I'm just listening to music and listening to music and trying to figure out where I'm going to go. Sometimes when you have this huge toolbox, it's hard to pigeonhole where you want to go. You know, if I can make a reggae track or if I can make a rock track, or if I can make a hip hop track, it's kind of hard to figure out, okay, well, what am I going to do today? What's my inspiration? So my inspiration, again, comes from records. And I will sift through records for hours and hours before I even land on something. Sometimes I bookmark things that I'm going to do later. But when I was going through records, I was playing this record from Chairman of the Board, which is a group, and they put out an album in 1972 called Bittersweet. And there was one particular song that really, really caught my ear. That would be as much as I need. I sort of get into a vibe. I hear tones and I hear instruments that I love. I hear things that I feel like I can manipulate. Myself, I like to sort of sample around words, you know, and that was sort of my calling card or thing that I would love to do is how can I take these sounds and manipulate them? Whether or not that's speeding it up, slowing it down, just something to get me started, to get me in a mood to even create music. So when I heard that record, that was instantly something that I wanted to sample. One thing that you should know about me is that 
I use a bunch of different DAWs. There are things that I like for different reasons. So, you know, my initial production most of the time starts in an MPC. That's the tool that I've been using for years. It's not to say that it's better or worse than any other beat machine or program. It's just what I am accustomed to and what I've been used to. I love my MPC 3000. Now, because we have the MPC Studio, that sort of workflow can go with me everywhere. I think that's an important part of when you're actually getting to work. Us as engineers, we love the latest, greatest. We love new plugins. We love to explore new things. But when it's time to really get to work, you need to grab that tool that will allow you to do exactly what you want to do the fastest. You know, knowing your tool inside and out is invaluable in production because you don't want to waste the inspiration time saying, how do I do this specific thing? You want to dive straight into it. And for me, that's an NPC.